Today we are chatting about all things apple cider vinegar, plus the role it plays in intermittent fasting, what the science says about it, and if you should be adding it to your routine. We'll be discussing the different ways to take apple cider vinegar and how to appropriately time it for maximum benefits. Plus, we'll talk about the key things you need to consider before adding apple cider vinegar to your routine. This is a topic people feel very strongly about and I can't wait to jump in. Let's get started. In this video, you'll learn all about apple cider vinegar, what the science says about it, and if you should add it to your routine. We're gonna talk about different ways to take it and how to time it appropriately for maximum effect. Plus the key things you need to consider before deciding to take apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is a type of vinegar made from apples. It's basically fermented apple juice. To make apple cider vinegar, you use a process called two-step fermentation. First, you crush the apples and expose them to yeast. The natural sugar from the apple is then fermented over time. That's the first step. So if you stop here, you kind of have an alcoholic cider almost. When you begin the second fermentation, the ethanol is oxidized into acetic acid by specific bacteria, and the end result is apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is a nutritional powerhouse. If you look at the composition, it contains eight different essential amino acids. It also contains six minerals, a variety of vitamins, vitamin C, several different B vitamins, beta carotene, niacin, and biotin magnesium and iron. Apple cider vinegar will improve digestion, it helps lower blood sugar levels, and over time it's been shown to reduce hemoglobin A1c scores. It can help improve insulin sensitivity, it can increase satiety, it can lower cholesterol, it can help improve heart health, it's anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. Let's dive into the science of how apple cider vinegar is both antimicrobial and antibacterial. The pH of apple cider vinegar is between 2 and 3, which is considered mildly acidic. Apple cider vinegar acts on bacteria by penetrating the cell wall and destroying its host DNA, which then disables the bacteria's reproduction. In a recent study, apple cider vinegar was tested on clinical isolates of Staph aureus and E. coli. Apple vinegar displayed 100% bactericidal when it was used against Staph aureus and 100% bacteriostatic against E. coli. Another study found that a lemon juice and apple cider vinegar combination decreased the growth of salmonella to undetectable levels. Nowadays, it seems like there's always a recall for lettuce at least once a week. Theoretically, throwing some apple cider vinegar on your salad will reduce the pH in the GI tract, which can limit the spread of pathogenic bacteria we may accidentally ingest from our food. So now let's talk about the results you get from apple cider vinegar. A 2019 study showed that participants who drank 20 cc's of apple cider vinegar in 200 ml of water every day before bed for 30 days consistently had an average BMI decrease of 0.5 points. So this decrease in BMI for someone who's, say, 5'5", would be equivalent to a weight loss of around 5 pounds. In another study, a 2018 study, participants drank 15 ml of apple cider vinegar with lunch and another 15 ml with dinner. Of course, it was diluted in water. They also ate about 250 calories less than their daily estimated requirements. The researchers found that apple cider vinegar significantly reduced weight. In fact, the people in the apple cider vinegar group lost an average of 8.5 pounds over 12 weeks compared to the control group who only drank plain water before lunch and dinner. So interestingly, in both studies, many participants still consume apple cider vinegar in their day-to-day -day life. They're continuing to lose weight. If you want to take a liquid type of vinegar, look for apple cider vinegar with something called the mother. This is considered more healthy and more effective for weight loss. I like the Bragg's brand, which I can find easily at a regular grocery store. Don't be scared by the phrase the mother. The mother refers to the combination of yeast and bacteria formed during fermentation. The mother is actually considered a probiotic. If you don't want to take the liquid version of apple cider vinegar, there are over-the-counter pills that you can take, and there are many different brands, including great store brands that you can choose from. If you don't like to take pills, there are a few other varieties, and there are gummy and chewable versions of apple cider vinegar. If you're a gummy vitamin or a gummy supplement person, definitely check out Goalie. So when should you take it? If you're taking your vinegar in a gummy form, be sure that you take it during your eating window and not first thing in the morning. Most gummies do have sugar in them, and this will definitely break your fast. If you're drinking the liquid form of apple cider vinegar, you can drink that during your fast. If you dirty fast, another option is to take it like they did in the study right before bed when your eating window has presumably closed. The best way to take apple cider vinegar is at the time that works best for you and at a time where you can predictably remember to take it. 
We can't talk about apple cider vinegar without discussing a couple of important points. Due to its acidic nature, apple cider vinegar can cause enamel erosion. After you drink it, be sure to follow with plain water. You can even rinse your mouth and then brush your teeth to make sure your enamel is safe. Another thing that you might want to consider is if you already have acid reflux or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, acidic liquids like vinegar might make those symptoms worse, so proceed with caution. And finally, if you have kidney disease, your kidneys might not be able to process or excrete the excess acid that comes along with drinking apple cider vinegar. So if you have any sort of kidney disease or renal issue or even renal impairment, be sure to talk with your doctor before deciding to take apple cider vinegar. Now it's your turn to take action. Decide if apple cider vinegar is right for you and experiment with the different formulations available. Pills, liquids, and gummies are all solid options. And if one doesn't appeal to you or the taste is off-putting, just try another form. Find something that works great for you. No matter what, be sure to track your results, including how you're feeling and if the scale is moving in the direction you want. Be sure to let us know what you think and what type of apple cider vinegar you're taking and when you're taking it. All right, so there you have it. All the details you need to know, plus the science and research behind all things apple cider vinegar. If you're interested in taking apple cider vinegar, or if you've already been taking it, let me know what form you take in the comments below. And if you still have questions if apple cider vinegar is right for you, let me know down below. I'd be happy to help you. As always, thank you so very much for watching this video. If you like my content, please give it a big thumbs up so it can spread to more people. If you're interested in more intermittent fasting content, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And if you want to continue watching more intermittent fasting videos, I highly recommend this one right here. I hope you have an amazing day. Aww.